Okay. All right. So how is everyone doing today? Good morning. I am Derek Briggs. And I'm coming to you again today, another day in the midst of this 50 days of teaching that we're doing while we are restricted. Uh, which the teaching is designed that uh, all things of the of the Bible of God uh, is designed to help increase, develop, um, increase and develop your faith. And we know that faith is the, the foundation that is necessary in order to please God. So while we are restricted uh, and we, we cannot assemble, um, you know, and we our lives have pretty much put been put on hold. Uh, it is important that God's the word of God still um, rules and in, in, in God's your life. OK. Um, uh, today, I wanted to talk about uh, prayer because prayer is very is very important. Um, prayer is very essential. Um, and this is going to be, uh, probably a two, uh, two day minimum, um, teaching, um, or discussion, you know, so we'll get into it, uh, start with, uh, today, beginning today, um, Philippians four and, and six says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, now let me say something, first of all. There are a lot of scriptures that I'm going to use in this teaching. I do not have the, the, the PowerPoint. Um, so, you know, write these scriptures down and go back and, and, and study them, look them up. So, um, so that you can um, be comfortable in what you believe. It's not about what Derek said. Yeah, Derek has put in the, the uh, spent time researching and studying it. Um, and meditating it on it, and I am guided by the Holy Spirit. However, you know, you need to understand this for you, okay? On Judgment Day, you're not going to be able to say what Derek said, okay? You need to know this and, and stand on this and believe this for yourself. So therefore, you know, I, 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 when God called me, I made a promise to God that I would never just echo anything that I had heard because there was a lot of stuff um, in the beginning, I was religious. There were a lot of things that were inside of me that were not biblical. And I had to go back and and once I began to read certain things or there are things that I had believed that was not in the Bible, I said that, OK, I want to make sure that, you know, what else do I believe that's not in the Bible? So I wanted to make sure that that um, that I knew that I read everything for myself before I delivered it uh, to God's people. So it's very important. Okay, so the, the first thing is, what is prayer? Now, the best way to uh, answer this is by beginning, by beginning with what is communication, okay? Now, communication is the process of, of um, is the process of sending uh, a message between two places, two people, okay? So it requires, communication requires three things. It requires a sender, a receiver, and a message. So the, the sender sends the message and the receiver receives the message. And the most important thing that it is communicated properly, okay? So this is the same thing that, that prayer is. Um, prayer is a direct communication between you and God. And uh, it's concerning his word, his will for your life. OK, concerning his word and his will for your life. Now, this communication is mandatory. It is mandatory. OK, and it includes but is not limited to worship needs, your desires and plans, um, which are and it's based on basically your obedience and God's will. OK, it's based on your obedience and God's will, because there are some things that you can pray for. Um, um, and through your obedience is what unlocks the um, unlocks receiving it. And there are some things that you can pray for 
but it's not the will of God. So it can't be done. So that's why, you know, a lot of times when people ask me to pray for loved ones or, or whomever or whatever I'm praying for, I always include, but let thy will be done. Okay. So that's very important that God's will has to be done. Okay. Because we have to understand that everybody is not to be healed. You know, everything is not to be received. It's all about the will of God. Okay. So, all right. So let's get into, let's, um, there is an example of a prayer in, in Matthew six, Matthew six, beginning, uh, verses nine to, to, uh, 13. And I'm going to break this down for you. Okay. Verses, verse nine says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. OK, now this prayer is fine. However, it is a generic prayer. OK, all the essential elements are here and I'm going to go through and break them down. However, when there's something specific that you need, you need to be able to implement um, the, the standard and whatever it is that you need. OK, so let, let me show you what's going on when it begins by saying our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. OK, this shows reverence and, and honor to God. OK, that will be done on in earth as it is in heaven. Now, let me explain something to you. The, 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 the key point of this, this part of the prayer, God gave man dominion in the earth. Okay. Now everything of God is spiritual. Everything happens in the spiritual realm first, and then it happens in the, in the natural realm. Okay. So when we say that will be done in earth, as it is in heaven, what we're saying is we're allowing God's will to be done in the in the in the uh, the realm of where we have dominion because we all have free will. Understand that we all have free will. And guess what? God will never and cannot override your free will. OK, so when we say Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, that's what we're saying. Let your will be done in my life. I'm giving you permission to override or well, not override, but to have your whatever your plans are to be done in my life. OK. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. OK, now this is the this is going to be like the body of the message, the purpose for prayer. This is your needs. You, you, you understand? And, and, and I'm I'm hoping that you're grasping on to this because I may be going a little bit fast. However, I want you to really like pay attention to what's going on and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. OK, this is a check to make sure that you are in right standing with forgiveness because everything with God and you requires forgiveness. OK, you have to make sure that you have forgiven others. So that in turn, God can forgive you because if you haven't forgiven those who have offended you or whatever, then guess what? God will not forgive you. So, so this is a check to make sure that, okay, I'm good. Okay. We're good. God. Okay. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, uh, from, from, from evil. This is guidance and deliverance. Guidance and deliverance for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is your closing. This is your worship. This is your thanksgiving. Now, understand this. There are different types of prayers. OK, and I'm not going to really cover those prayers. You know, there's the uh, prayer of adoration, uh, confession, prayer of thanksgiving, uh, supplication, prayers of faith, uh, consecration, uh, prayers of agreement. There are corporate prayers. Um um, you know, just to name an accessory prayers, um, just to name uh, a few types of prayer. Now, let me let me say this to you. When you are praying, the only the only difference between praying for yourself and praying for somebody else is replacing the I or me with that brother or sister's name. Or whomever's name. That's the difference. But the concept, the principles, the foundation are all going to be the same. So when somebody says, pray for me, all you're doing is just like you would pray for yourself, except you put their name into it. 
Do you understand that? That should be simple. That should be simple. But the key is, it's all about developing a relationship um, where you can ask God for everything and anything, okay? Including what you do not know you need. That's the key, okay? You develop that relationship that that so that you can ask God for whatever you need, wherever you're going for guidance, for everything, for anything, you have to have that. You have to be comfortable, and that that comfort of that comfortability um, is developed as the relationship is developed. As you get closer to God, you begin to be uh, okay with telling Him whatever. Because you put in that time. If you understand a relationship, that's how a relationship works. Okay, in the beginning of any relationship, you really don't know that person. So you begin to, to talk. You're talking on the phone. You're texting. Uh, you're seeing them. Okay? And the more time that you spend with them in a relationship, in the beginning, you want to spend more time with them. You want to talk to them more. You want to text them more. See how they're doing. Hey, I'm just calling to say what's up. OK, because you're developing the foundation for that relationship. It's the same way with God. And as you 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 talk to them more frequently, um, you, the closer you are. And see, in the beginning, um, I'm going I'm to use my wife and I, for example. OK, in the beginning, I may not have been able to like right now, if I can hear Solanda's voice um, out of in a, in a in a in a crowded room. Why? Because I spent time with her and I'm sensitive to her, vo her voice. In the beginning, it wasn't like that. The difference, the, the, it's the same thing with God. The, in the beginning, God is always speaking. However, you may not be sensitive to his voice. However, the more time that you spend, now you begin to be able to hear his voice. Okay? And that comes from what? Developing the relationship. Okay? That's, 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 that's very important. Okay. Now there are rules for, um, there are rules for prayer, for praying. Okay. And, and I'm going to give you, give you these rules. First of all, it is not a competition. Prayer is not a competition. In fact, in Matthew six and seven, uh, Jesus said, but when you pray, use not vain repetition. As the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. So now understand this, because you got to realize what was going on is like the, 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 the Pharisees, Sadducees, they were hypocrites. OK, and they were praying, they were putting on the show. So they they're emphasizing uh, over overly emphasizing words. Uh, they're screaming. You know, this is not necessary. Why? Because it's a spiritual connection. Yeah. God knows what you have need of before you ask, but you still have to ask. You see what I'm saying? But the the, the clapping of the hand and and repenting and, and now my father and, you know, all of this is not necessary because I promise you that if you were in front of if you, you were kneeling before the throne of God, you would not be speaking like that. You could you would speak directly. OK, so all of this is just about the show. And this is why you have so many people because um, I've been around church folk pretty much all my life. But this is why there are so many people that are uncomfortable um, praying out loud. Why? Because they've seen too many movies. You see what I'm saying? They, they, they're going to compare their prayer to, oh, brother so-and-so really prays. And a lot of times what people are saying is, I like to hear what he does. I like the way that he's praying, how he adds all of this in it and all of that. But that's, that is not necessary. You can just talk to God. OK, it is not necessary. So it's not about competition. OK, now, the other thing is um, when you pray, you have to pray to God in the name of Jesus. OK, John 16, 23 says, and in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. So you pray to God 
in the name of Jesus. Now, why do we pray in Jesus's name? Now, I, I want you to understand this because this is this is something that you really need to understand. The Jesus that walked the earth is not the Jesus that we pray to. OK, let me explain that to you, because the Jesus that walked the earth was the man. OK, but when he rose again, he rose with all power and authority. OK, so when he rose, that's why we pray to God in his name. However, when he walked to the earth, we wasn't praying to God in his name. OK, that is the result of his obedience that he received power and authority. OK, so watch this. Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise of God. OK, so if you um, let's see, let's go to go to um, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians one verses 18 through 21. And it reads, 18 says, but as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. So it's saying that Christ is God's yes. Okay. For all the promises of God in him are Yea, and in him, a man unto the glory of God by us. He is the yes to all God's promises. Okay, and verse 21 says, Now he which uh, establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us in God. So it's saying that Christ is the promise of God. That's what you need to understand. See, when people, um, when they're reading the Old Testament and they're saying that, okay, God, uh, Christ came and said something different. No, he wasn't saying anything different. He was letting you know that I'm the fulfillment of what was said before me. And see, this is why in Matthew 5 and 17, he said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He is the fulfillment because everything that God said, everything that he did has to be fulfilled. So Christ said that what? I am the fulfillment of, of the Old Testament. Okay? So that's, that's, that's important to understand that you pray to God in the name of Jesus. Not about competition. You pray to God in the name of Jesus. Okay? Um, the next thing is, um, let me see. Jesus has all authority of God, okay? And I said this, I kind of like touched on this earlier, that when he rose again, he rose with all power and uh, authority, okay? John 3 and 34 says, For he whom God had sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and had given all things into his hand. OK, so Jesus has that that authority of God. And remember that he received all power and authority when when he was resurrected. OK, when he was resurrected. OK, now the, the problem now you have to understand that it's all about faith. The 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 your approval of your prayer is based on faith. OK, please understand it. OK, so and James one gives us uh, something that is very important. It says James 1, 6 through 8, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So what this, what this scripture is telling us is that, hey, when you, when you pray, you have to believe what you're praying. You have to have faith. Because doubt cancels faith. So you, and think about this, there is nothing that you will pray for if you doubt that you can receive it. You're not going to ask for it because you doubt, you're, you're doubting that you can receive it. So anything that you doubt, you, 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 you're not going to even ask for it. Okay. So in the scripture tells us that if you doubt, then guess what? You can't receive anything because it's all about faith. Okay. You got that. All right. Now, let me tell you this. The most effective way of praying is knowing the assurances of God and the promises of God. So let me tell you about the assurances of God. 
Okay. You have to know the assurance of God, and then you have to know the promises of God. Let's start with the assurances of God. Nothing is impossible with him. That is an assurance that he has given you. Luke 18 and 27. And he said the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Okay? Nothing is impossible. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. This is another assurance that, guess what? He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask and think. So that means that our mind is limited. Our mind is in a box. However, God can do exceedingly above our mind. Okay? And see, guess what? That should be some hope for you. That's some hope right there that beyond what I can even think or imagine, God is able to do it. Okay. All right. So um, let me see. Another thing is he will never fail. Okay. God will never fail. He cannot lie. Numbers is not a man. Numbers uh, 23 and 19 that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and he shall uh, he had have he said, and shall he not do it? So it's saying that if God has said it, he's going to do it. Okay? So God cannot lie. Okay? You understand that? He is all powerful. He is faithful. These are the assurances of God. Okay? And my, uh, my favorite of all the assurances of God is, is Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Um, who for the uh, together for the good of them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. That is my favorite assurance that no matter what is going to be all right. OK, those are the assurances of God. Now, let me tell you this. The key to getting your prayers answered is obedience. Okay, the key to getting your prayers answered is obedience, is faith, forgiveness, and most importantly, here we go, reminding God of his promises. Reminding God of his promises. Ah, so watch this. Now, here we go. Reminding God of his promises because now the most effective way to pray is to remind God of what he said, okay? The most effective way to pray is to remind God of what he said, okay? So let, me, let me give you an example of something. Let's use money for an example. Let's say Solanda. If, if I ask Solanda, Solanda, uh, do you have $10? And she say, I don't have $10 right now, but I'll give it to you on the first, okay? Remind me on the first, Call and remind me on the first. So on the first, watch what I'm going to do. On the first, I call Solanda and say, hey, Solanda, I'm calling you about the $10 that you said you was going to give me on the first. You told me to remind you. Okay. Now watch this. Let me, and Solanda, of course, is going to say, okay, yeah, I have it for you. Now watch this. Let me break this thing down according to God. So God has said, when I send the request to him, when I say, hey, Solanda, uh, do you have $10? And Solanda say, on the first, call and remind me. So watch this. When I send up a request to God, God, do you have? God says that, okay, in his word, he's already said A, B, C, and D. He's already said in his word, metaphorically, on the first, remind me. But it's remind me whenever you need it, okay? So when I call God, when I pray to God, I'm going to say that, hey, God, you said in your word that all I needed to do was ask you on at this particular time. Is that a good example for you? You see, so God has said it and whenever we need access to it, then we say, hey God, you say it. And now I'm ne I need it. I'm holding you at your word. Okay, that's what we're doing. So watch this. So now it will behoove you to become familiar with what the word of God says. 
Because see, you can't remind God of anything that you don't know what he said. So you become familiar with what he said. And then when you need it, you call him and say, hey, you said, God, look, this is this is impossible for me. But I know that your word said that it's it's impossible for you. It is possible for you. You see, that's right. Put him at remembrance of his word. So watch this. Let me get and This is why I say it's going to be a, a, a two day, um, at least a two day teaching. Okay, I'm going to give you now two things, two things. I'm going to cover addiction and I will cover depression. Okay, addiction and depression. These are, and what, once again, I'm giving you what? The promises of God so that when you pray, you can put this into the body of that message, your communication. Okay, so watch this. With addiction, Psalms 50 and 15 says... And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So the scripture is saying that whatever you're dealing with in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. Okay? Because there is nothing greater than God. Nothing. No matter what you do, you're dealing with. Let me tell you something. See, a lot of times with addiction, how addiction work is, people, when there's a void in your life, Whatever you use to help you get over that void, if it is something that can be addictive, then you will develop an addiction to it. OK, so let me give you that. OK, let's say that that um, um, I used to gamble. I'll use me for an example. I used to gamble. And the thing is, when I I, I suffered from depression, OK, and. Going to the casino, by me working in the casino, going to the casino, I was able to, um, everybody was happy. I was the life of the party. And it was kind of like I was being celebrated. When I show up, you know, I got the jokes. You know, um, people immediately begin to smile when I show up. And in return, it allowed me to escape the reality of being depressed. Okay. So I found myself, even when I wasn't working at the casino, still going frequent the, the casino and gambling. But here's what happened. The gambling addiction, now when I, when I leave the casino, I have no money. Now I'm worse off than when I even went to the casino. But I found myself, every time I had money, because I had developed the addiction, I was going back to the casino to gamble. You see what I'm saying? To gamble and escape. So I thought. You understand this? However, this scripture said that, guess what? God will deliver you. See, a lot of things, we put our trust, our faith, our hope in the wrong things. We put it in something temporary. We put it in something that is not beneficial for us. And what it ends up doing is it may fix one thing or pacify one thing, but now it creates something totally different. You see, so it may be beneficial. So we think in one area, but in another area it's detrimental. OK. Um, Isaiah 58 and 6 says, is not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that they break every yoke. So watch this. See, when you're praying to God, <clears throat> see, like the scripture said that I will deliver you, call upon, uh, call upon me in the name of, uh, in the time of, in the day of trouble. So guess what? When you pray, you're saying, God, your word says to call upon you in the day of trouble and you will deliver me. I stand in the need of I, I stand in the need of prayer. I, I stand in the need of deliverance. That's what you're going to pray. It's direct. It's simple. You don't have to go through hooping and clapping your hands and keep on repeating it because guess what? God deals with your heart. So even when you when you begin to pray, God already knows where you are. So guess what? You ain't going to tell. You don't have to tell God over and over. You said your word says. Because he knows your heart. You're just putting on a show. That's not necessary. 
And watch this. Let me tell you this. You can be doing the right thing, but if your heart is in the wrong place, then it's going to make it of none effect. Do you understand that? Let's keep going. Get back to that Isaiah 58 and 6 because we're talking about, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, addiction. It says that, okay, again, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let, and to let the oppressed go free? God, your word says that you would let the oppressed go free. See, this is how you begin to pray. You say it. God, I'm not making this up. You say it. And since you're a man that cannot lie, I know that you're going to do what you said. You see, you said that you'll break every yoke. I'm dealing with something right now that it seems like I can't deal with, that I can't handle it. But I know what your word says. You see, this is how you you pray. Romans 8 and 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So guess what? You're reminding God of this. God, your word says there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm doing, I'm obedient. I'm following your word. I'm surrendering my will to you. I'm submitting my will to you. So guess what, God? I need you to do what your word says you're going to do. And since you're a man that cannot lie, I know that you're going to do it. See? In the name of Jesus. This is how you pray. This is, this is how you put that message together. You see? This is how we, we, we put that message together. He said, he will never leave you alone. Exodus 33 and 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. He will never leave thee or forsake thee. Okay. If God is always with you, then guess what? It doesn't matter who it seems like when you physically look out at the, the, the masses and see that, okay, seems like everybody's against me because God has already assured you that, guess what? He's with you. He's going to go with you. As long as you are obedient, you are faithful, then guess what? He's with you. Please understand that. So watch this. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. And this is something that, that, that is very important. And matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to give it to you right now. Satan has no authority over you. Satan has no authority over you. Matthew 28 and 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay. All right. So if God is with you, Satan cannot be against you. Do you understand this? Because here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the promise of this. Okay. We are promised that in the end, we're going to be victorious. Okay. Satan has no power, no authority over you. Let me tell you this. As long as you access your power and authority through Christ, then you're over Satan. However, let me give you this. If you do not access that power and authority through Christ, then guess what? Satan is, is dominant over you. Let me give you a breakdown right quick. Let me, let me explain this because I don't want you to be confused. Because, see, here's what you have to understand. Angels are created higher than men. Okay? So that means that angels has more power more authority, okay, than man. However, Christ is above the angels, okay? He was exalted above the angels. Watch this. So when we access that power above the angels, this is why we have uh, the power and authority over all. However, without Christ, we are below the angels. So on your own, Satan can dominate you. On your own. If you don't access your power and authority, Satan can dominate you. Now, here's the thing. Satan can only deceive you. See, when you're accessing it through Christ, he can only deceive you, make you think something is what it's not. Okay? He has to deceive you to, in order for you to give it to him. Give him the worship. 
Okay, and, and, and at, the, at his core, what does Satan come to do? Yeah, he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but he wants to say that what? God is a lie. Satan wants to say that, no, that's not true. God is a lie. Law of first mention, I was, I've been talking about law of first mention. When he showed up in the garden with, with Eve, the first thing that he said is, did God really say that? Hmm, because he's saying that God is a lie. That's not going, you're not going to die. God is a lie. That's what he's saying. So anytime he can get you to buy into what he's saying, then guess what? You bypass God. You're saying the same thing that he's saying that, okay, you know what? God is a lie. I hope that you understand that. He has no authority over you. Satan will tell you that that addiction, that the drugs, that the gambling, that's what's helping you get through it. You need to, you need to escape your problems. And see, when you buy into these these little things, now you 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 end up in a state like, again that's detrimental for you. And you're thinking that what helped you get through the divorce was the crack. What helped you got through the the divorce was, was gambling. You see, what helped you got through when you didn't have a job was was the weed. It's a trick of the enemy. Okay? It is a trick of the enemy. So um let, let's let's in 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 um let's go to depression right quick. And this will be the last thing. I don't know how long I've been on here. Let's go to depression right quick. Psalms 9 and 9 says, The Lord also will give, will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Let me tell you something. There is a scripture for whatever you're dealing with in the Bible. No matter what the, the circumstances are, there's a scripture that you can go through that will be able to combat um, whatever you're dealing with. And this is why you have to be familiar with the word of God so that you can find it, you can access it, and you can speak to your circumstance. You can speak to your situation. Okay? Because you have power and authority. You see, the worst thing in the world is for you to have power and authority, but not be aware of the power and authority that you have. Because if you're not aware of it, then guess what? You can still be defeated. Because once again, here's what the enemy is going to do. The enemy is going to distract you from your power and authority. Because as long as he can disconnect you and put a wedge in between you and God, then he can conquer you because you're isolated. You're by yourself. You're powerless. Now you play into his realm, his domain, his strong point. Understand that. So the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. So once again, when you're praying, Lord, you say that you will be a refuge for the oppressed. Right now, Lord, I'm going through. I don't know what's what. I don't know what to do. I, I, I can't go to work. The coronavirus situation ha has me stuck at home. I have no finances. All they've given me is $1,200, but my, my mortgage, my rent is, is, is $1,400. I don't have any money in the bank. I don't know what I'm going to do. He's saying it's, in, it's impossible for me. I don't know. I don't know what's next. But Lord, you say it. See? But God, you said, so now I'm standing on your word. I'm trusting and believing that everything that you've said, because this is my time of trouble. And I need you to be that, that refuge that I've read about in the Bible. I need you to show up in my life right now. I need you to show yourself to be God right now. And guess what? He will do it. See, because once again, he cannot lie. He can do all things. Everything, and, and let me tell you something. Do you realize that everything is in, God is in control of everything? God is in control of everything. You control nothing. You control nothing at all. So guess what? If you think that, okay, well, I ain't going to pray about it. I'm, I'm going to worry about it. Lord, what am I going to do? $1,200? I ain't even got my $1,200 yet. Um, my bills are due. I'm hungry. The kids in here, the kids driving me crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. 
What is that going to change? How is your situation going to benefit from what you're doing? It will not. The only thing that's going to happen is it's going to you're going to begin to worry and you're going to end up depressed. But guess what? What is happening is still going to happen. It's not like the president is going to call the next day and say, hey, hey, Derek, how you doing? Oh, it's, it's, it's getting you down. OK, well, you know what? I'm going to do this for you. No. No, not going to happen. So the best thing, the only thing that you can do happens to be the best thing that you can do, which is give it to God. And it's that, it's, it's, it's that simple. Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles. The righteous cry, the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their trouble. The righteous cry in the Lord, hear it, and deliver them out of all their trouble. Lord, I know you hear me. Lord, I know you hear me. Your word says that you will deliver me. God, I need you to make it all right. That's how you pray. It's not about you sick, coronavirus. No. No. You put it on the show for yourself. You're fooling yourself. All you got to do is speak to God. Ah, Lord, I don't know what's going on with this coronavirus situation, but I know that you're able. I may not understand the scientists may understand, but I understand that you made the scientists. So, Lord, I trust you. This is how you pray. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of my righteousness. The Lord will uphold you. Don't be afraid. Because there is nothing in this world that can harm you. Hmm. See that? Do you understand this? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Doesn't mean that the weapons won't be used. But they won't prosper. Doesn't mean that the weapon won't hurt you. But it won't prosper. You see? Do you understand it? There are people that are being destroyed over things that should have destroyed them. Even when we look at the coronavirus, there are people that, that, that are being destroyed from the coronavirus that shouldn't be destroyed from it. Why? Because they've given up. Let me give you, let me, let me tell you this. I'm tell you this and this is, let me tell you. That's just like, um, for those of us that understand history with the Tuskegee studies, the, T the uh, Tuskegee study was an experiment that happened where they gave, um, these, a group of men had syphilis. Okay. And they say that, okay, penicillin was the, the, the cure for, um, for syphilis. So they said two groups, we're going to give one group the pen the penicillin and one group. No, they, they, Okay. One group got the penicillin and one group did not. Okay. However, so if A got the penicillin and B did not, what they did when they told the, the, the men, they told them that A didn't get the penicillin and that B got the penicillin. So that means that the group that got the penicillin, they told them that they never received it. And the group that didn't get the penicillin, they told them that they received it. And guess what? The group that didn't get the penicillin survived. You know why? Because they didn't give up. Whereas the group that got the penicillin, that got the cure for the disease, they gave up. So it, it shows you something about your mind, about the power of your mind. The Bible says, a man think it, so is he. Okay? When you don't give up, when you have hope, when you have faith, guess what? You're going to believe what God said, and guess what? God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I'm going to stand on it. Guess what? I'm not worried about the coronavirus. I know what it said. I know I ain't got no money. We ain't got no food. But guess what? God, listen, I, I need you to show up. I need you to be God. I need you to do it. However you're going to do it, God, I, I'm, I'm trusting. I'm trusting. I'm leaning. I'm depending on you. And now, guess what? I can go back to what I'm doing my, the rest of my day. Because guess what? That's the only thing that I can do. You can't go nowhere. You can't go back to work and get it. 
Can't spend time just thinking about it. Allow it to consume your day. Give it to God. That's right. And at the end of the day, it's all triggered by your obedience. Your obedience is everything. Thank you, Solana. Your obedience is everything. This is what it's all triggered by. Now, so today I, I gave you scriptures on depression and addiction. Okay? So tomorrow... I'm going to come back. We're going to recap and I'm going to give you some more um, situations or circumstances that you are that you can use the scripture to speak to it so that you can give your your prayer uh, some content. And remember, it's not a competition. It's not about how repetitive you are, how how much of an eloquent speaker you are. It's the effectiveness is just say what God says. He will never leave you or, mis or, or, or forsake you. God, you say you'll never leave me or forsake me. And I believe that. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. There's no need for you to be embarrassed to pray in front of people. See, and the reason why you're embarrassed, another reason why you're embarrassed, because you haven't spent the time. You're not, you don't have a prayer life. You see? Because if you are constantly talking to God, then guess what? Whenever it's time to talk to him, hey, it's Derek. You see, you ain't got to be uncomfortable because, you, you know what I'm saying, thinking that, that God may not hear. Guess what? Let me, let me tell you something. And I know I said that uh, I was, uh, let, let me tell you this. I remember one time my mechanic, this was years ago, the mechanic called me to pray for him. And, well, he, I called him to check on the car. And he said, yeah, the car ready. And he was like, and I said, okay, I'm coming over there to get it. He said, hey, man, listen, look, when you, when you get here now, I know you're in church and stuff. I need you to pray for me. And I'm like, okay, now I'm trying to figure out, now listen, first of all, I got to go to this man because he have my car. You see what I'm saying? But I'm trying to figure out, I, I can't pray to him. I, I don't, I, I can't pray for him. I, I don't know what to, you know, I ain't, that, that ain't me. But what he said is, I know that you're in church. So what he says is, hey, right now, out of you and I, you're the expert on God. And since you go to church, show me what you believe. Come on over and pray for me. I trust your, your prayers uh, more than mine. And guess what? And I'm on my way. I promise you, I'm on my way over there trying to practice. Like, what, what am I going to say to this? What, what am I going to say? Because I'm nice with, at the time, I'm nice with now I lay me down to sleep. You see what I'm saying? But I don't know if he going to really go for this. You see? So watch this. And guess what? When I got, when I got to, the, um, to his house to pick up the car, I tried to get in my car and leave. I walked around kind of like, okay, okay, yeah, you got this. Oh, okay, all right, man, I really appreciate it. I jumped in the car, and he was like, hey, 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 hey. Man, I told you I needed you to pray for me. And I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do? And I begin to pray, Lord. Um, um, I begin to repeat what I done heard the people in church were saying. He's your humble servant. And, um, I know, uh, uh. Please, Lord, look and have mercy. So I'm throwing out everything that I know. But I got my eyes open now because I'm looking at him because I'm trying to make sure, hey, is this, this okay? And and now he's looking at me like, like, what are you doing? So guess what? And the thing is, had I been the person that I was representing that I was supposed to be, I should have already had a prayer life. You cannot be a believer and you don't have a prayer life developed, established. It is impossible that you're a believer, but you don't have a relationship with God, whereas you can talk to him, that you're comfortable with talking to him. Because, see, habit, if, if something is a habit, you become comfortable with it. So if, if I'm in habit of speaking to God at different types of times of the day, not just when I go to bed at night, not just when I wake up in the morning. Then guess what? Now I'm telling them, God, Lord, Lord thank you. You know, Lord, thank you for, oh, thank you for whatever, for the small things. Thank you for the cool breeze. You see, you just tell him, communicate everything. You see, so 
Um, again, this is Derek Briggs. I'll be back tomorrow. Until tomorrow, I want you to remember that, that in spite of your circumstance, in spite of your situation, God is always in control. All you need to do is keep the faith and allow God to be God. Allow God to do what he does. All you need to do is surrender. And I hope that I've given you some things that tonight when you pray, you can add these things to your prayer. I hope that I've given you some information that you can add to your prayer. And I'll be back tomorrow. So until tomorrow, God bless you and keep you. Okay.